Greetings YouTube, family, friends, and survivors. I am in almost the end of my absorb mode on my batteries. We have sunshine today. I'm at 30.8 volts, 6.5 amps going into the battery. Batteries are 100% full. If I hold that button down, this is amp hours, so I've got 1.2 amp hours over full. This is days since charged today, just a little while ago. It said, okay, I've hit my charge criteria at 0 0.01. So that was about a half hour ago. And so this would be a good place to see how much more power I had to put into the batteries than I took out. This is days since equalized. This is watts going in to the battery bank right now. Not how much the house is using, just what's going into the battery bank. 199, 200 watts. Okay, the next one. This is the percentage replaced. So I've put in 16% more than I took out. And I want to explain that to you. So what that means is, I put in 16% more than I took out. You have this thing with batteries, flooded lead acid, called efficiency. What is your efficiency rating? These batteries knew, we calculated their efficiency was about 90%. So that means I would have to put in 10% more than I took out. So if I used 100 amp hours, I'd have to put in 110 amp hours. That's because of the nature of a battery and the resistance and it not accepting power as easily as maybe lithium ion or something like that as a higher percentage of efficiency. So why is it now 16% more than 10? 10 is the default setting and that's calculating on what we think the battery efficiency is. When the batteries are new, that's pretty typical. When the batteries get older, it's going to have to start having more and more power, more than 10% back into the batteries than you took out. The other thing that affects it is temperature. <clears throat> the batteries do not like to give power and they don't like to receive power when it's cold. So when my battery banks in the low 40s, uh, it takes more than 10% more to get the batteries full. Now, I've got 16% more, and the reason why is my absorb cycle is so long, the way I have my battery, my charge algorithm set up, the absorb cycle can be four or five hours long. And the longer it's in absorb, it keeps adding more and more to that percentage figure. So in the summertime, it typically reads 11%. In the winter time when the batteries are cold, uh, it can be as high as 125, so 25% more into the batteries than I took out because of the temperature. So that changes, but the trimetrics calibrated and it is reading the same thing that the specific gravity reads, so I know I'm still spot on. The batteries are only, well, one set is a year old, so the other set that's two years old. We'll call the whole battery bank two years old. And so they're still looking new. I ought to take you in and show you that. This is a vented, passively vented box. I keep a little flashlight right here. I like tiny bubbles. That's a good thing. And so mine look really, really clean. The specific gravity is all the way up. And I'm in absorb. And they should be gassing like that. That's a good sign. Notice how clean the plates are. All of these batteries look like this. And we've done everything we could using every trick in the book to try to take care of these batteries to make them last as long as possible. There's eight of them. Another set back there. So two strings at 24 volts.
So here's another reason why you could see that percentage replaced figure elevated. The way this TriStar charge controller is set up, if I'm in absorb mode, its default setting for absorb mode is three hours. So once it goes into that last mode, some manufacturers call it acceptance mode. So when it's in that mode, it starts out at three hours which on a sunny day we achieve really, really quickly in the summertime. But if there's a large load recognized in the house, vacuum cleaner starts while the, vac while the uh, microwave is running or the refrigerator and freezer both happen to be on at the same time, something like that it recognizes a large load and it pulls it out of PWM and goes into bulk mode even one time that resets the clock for another three hours. Well, some people might say that that's using more water because I'm an absorb voltage too long and I'm using more water than I need to. Well, the truth is I'm super conditioning these batteries even though I'm using more water than most people. These plates are staying really, really clean and they're not becoming sulfated, which is the, the thing we're really after. So staying in absorb mode, and even the manual, TriStar's manual, says that you know you may never see float if there's a large load on the system, the house. So everything's running like it should, and these batteries really don't need to be equalized be very often because they're spending so much of their time at the absorb voltage, in this case today because of the temperature, it's 30.5 volts. So that's a happy thing. I have to water my batteries every 45 days. And I'd rather be pouring water in there than sulfating my batteries. I'm way better off doing that than sulfating and ruining these batteries. So every 45 days is not too bad. They've got really deep wells. And the other thing is I keep an eye on the battery temperature. When my batteries are at 55 degrees after the end of a charge cycle, I'm not too concerned about warping plates and hurting things by staying in absorb voltage for so long. It's not going to happen. Even in the summertime, the warmest I see, I think I saw 89 degrees one time after the end of a really long, hot day. And that's not going to hurt anything. So Maybe if I was at the equator, where I had 12 hours of full sun, yeah, I'd probably uh, turn the voltage down and absorb a little bit, because I'd have a ridiculous amount of solar. But here in the Pacific Northwest, that is a rare sight until mid-March. And I can't really get much power to run the house until the 1st of April. And then things were running pretty good by... Uh, April 15th, we say goodbye to the generator. You don't say hello to it again until the um, first part of November. So a little talk on batteries and sharing this beautiful sunny day with you. And it's about to change. When we get a clear sky like this and cold temperatures, that means snow and ice is coming. And I've got some friends on the other side of the Cascades. They're going to be 25 below by Monday. And, uh, you know, 14 degrees during the day. We're not going to get that cold here. But certainly cold enough for us to make sure we've got our ducks in a row with our water system and pipes insulated and uh, making sure we've got water to the animals. <clears throat> because we aren't going to be above freezing for maybe 10 days. So we're going to do what we can. There might be some white stuff. I added all this, the reports up. Worst case scenario, 28 inches. Best case scenario, 14 inches. But it should be a pretty dry snow. And dry snow is just a pleasure compared to the wet, floppy stuff. All right, I've said enough. Happy New Year, everyone. And the Lord bless you richly.